Welcome to my new office. It's, um, it's the place I go when I can't work from home. So we were having this conversation on our Discord about um, not being able to close the door. That's what Carseed said. And um, basically, being a freelance has a lot of pros. So you can do your own hour. You can do pretty much your, your own time. You fit that in your time schedule, you can work from home. But it can also have some serious cons on your brain if you're never able to shut off your your head and you're always in the working mode you're either stuck doing two things either always working or you're not working at all so yeah when i can't work anymore from home i just come here now that's my new thing so here i am and also here i will be from time to time and if you're worried about the audio it's gonna get better because i've bought this sweet rode microphone in fact i have it in my home right now the only thing is that they don't send you the right cables you have to buy additional cable on top of that which is kind of kind of stupid and I'm pl plus on top of that I'm, I'm recording with the pixel phone so I had to dig really really far in my house to find this small cable the pixel 2 doesn't have any audio jack it only has a USB cable um, USB-C so you have to find something that has USB-C and then the 3.5 audio jack on it um, yeah okay so the reason for today's video is the upcoming tutorial on the channel So, as I promised earlier this year, our focus is going to be multiplayer and also movement. Now this one is not going to be about movement. We already got our movement state machine out there. It's the first thing on the channel. If you go now, um, that's what you'll see. However, this one is about multiplayer. And we've already done a little bit of multiplayer in the past. However, it was kind of really bad. This one is much better. And on top of that, we're also going to have a second part, which is going to be even better than that. However, if you want to learn stuff, you got to go step by step. I'm quite satisfied with the product we're going to end up having at the end of the year. Um, I'm just so sorry it took 10 months for me to learn all that stuff. Other project came and, uh, you know, priorities. So what is this multiplayer project, you ask? It's going to be an application in which you'll be able to log in, create an account, create an account, then log in, of course, and then um, add friend and see who's online. And that's going to be our first tutorial. So this will teach you about client server communication, server client communication. It will support normal socket and also web socket, which means you can build this for standalone uh, Linux, Mac, PC, but you could also build this for HTML5 and run it in Chrome, Firefox, and so on. Anything that supports HTML5. It is going to be a major upgrade from the one we've done earlier this year. Um, we're not going to be using strings. We're not going to be sending strings through the packets anymore. That's that's retarded We're also going to be splitting our different message So if it's a position update if it's a authentication request, that's all going to be split in different .cs classes Oh, and because that was requested quite a lot in the first tutorial in the comments at least uh, We're gonna be using a database and I chose to use MongoDB. You can use anything you want. What is this sound? My air conditioning is going crazy. So we're gonna be using a Mongo database and we're gonna have an authentication, login flow, something that's secure, and we'll be using a token base um, authentication flow in that case, if you know what I'm talking about. But most importantly, it will be used as our server once we take on the second part of the tutorial, which is going to be creating a game, an actual arena game, in which people will be there in real time playing their account that they can create in our first project and that will carry on over to the second project so yeah just to give you a quick view on this on this other project afterward it's going to be a, an arena game that people can join in and play as guests but they can also decide to create an account keep track of their progress and uh, that's why this project is here first and also we're going to learn quite a lot from the first one and it's going to be much easier to transition in the second one Plus, it's really good because the multiplayer arena game is quite a big project and being able to chunk it off like this is, uh, is going to make it manageable to actually listen to and follow along. We spoke enough about project two, now let's go back to project one. I'll get some paper eventually, but right now we got enough of these boxes, so that's, that's what I'll be using. Stop!
This handwriting is so bad. I've lost my beard. This one is much better. It's still not good, but it's much better. Um, three big things. Client, server, and also database. If we have a look at the top left over here, you'll be able to have a client using any browser you want that supports HTML5. That's pretty much everything except Opera, I guess. You don't, you can't go there with Uriu. Um, you can also join in with a Windows, Mac, Linux. And then with your server, you can only host it on Windows, Mac, Linux. Now for the rest of the graph, every time you see a rectangle and then the small rectangle next to it, so like create account over here, that's a message that is being sent on over the bandwidth. So yeah, that's a message that goes through the network. So if we have a look over here, create account is something we create on the client. We fill in all that information and then we push it to the server and he is going to have a new message called uncreate account, which is basically just a feedback. So client says, hey, I'm trying to, to create an account. Here is my username, password, other information you want. Um, server receives it. He goes back and forth with the database. He tries to insert it. And then he's going to return that answer back to the client. So basically, you're, you're sending a message from the client. He tries to add it to the database. Database tell him, yes, it works. No, it doesn't work. Email is already being used somewhere or some condition aren't met. And then he returns that response right on to the client. Same thing for login. Um, however, at this point, you receive a token, which you'll use every time you want to act on behalf of yourself. So it's a token-based authentication, also a token-based everything after that. Okay, um, we're going to have a follow system. As I've mentioned, this is like the friend system, but it really just behaved like a follow system. So we, we name change this thing. Simple stuff. So you ask for the people who you follow to make sure it's actually you, you're sending your token over, then um, he's going to have a back and forth with database, look at everybody you follow, so he will return you that list of follows. Over here on the add follow, same exact thing, same flow, however, um, I'm not getting a response back if I do a remove. We're going to have a message to add it, we're going to have a feedback if we add someone, but if we delete him, we're just going to go like one way, so delete from the client, delete from the server, and delete from the database. Actually, there's no deleting on the server. It's actually just a relay. Um, yeah. And then um, if you're a client, you're connected and you disconnect, it's going to send a message automatically to the server, which is going to update everybody who follows you and tell them that you're offline. So that's kind of the big picture. Um, what's really just the main thing in here is to look at these messages that we're going to be sending. So there's going to be 10 of them. So you should be expecting to see 10 areas in your code where you're sending a message and then you should be expecting nine places in your code where you're listening for a message because they all have a return value like you're always getting some kind of feedback except here uh, on the remote follow I don't want to have feedback and um, yeah there's no message sent for connection and disconnection because that's already handled by unity themselves or the lower level API and one more thing that is a uh, good pointing out every time that you have access to the database it's because you're going through the server. The client never has access directly to the database. Now, do I have anything else to add? Um, yes, so this is gonna be used as the authentication server for the game. Now, the game is a second tutorial, so don't get confused. We're not creating a game here, we're creating some kind of lobby system, so um, yeah, but this server is going to be used for the game, however, the client is not. So if you don't feel like doing good-looking UI, if you don't feel like, like polishing anything on the client side, Feel free to not do it because we're gonna we're gonna throw that one away um, once we move on to the second tutorial. So why am I doing this exactly? Well, because the second game is gonna be something um, in the browser. I want to have it in the browser. Everybody can just connect from anywhere using an URL. You just start up a game, play as a guest, or you can authenticate using that server and actually keep track of your progress. Maybe you have an avatar, username, discriminator. Um, you don't show the email, of course, but. Nice information you can have about yourself and also to keep track of your progress in the game, assuming you want to have some kind of progress. So this is based on a couple of games that uh, we thought were quite cool. So like Zums Royale is a .io game. You just boot it in your browser like that. And you can just jump in the game and play as a guest and just do whatever carnage you want. But you can also keep track of your progress, unlock skins and do duos with your friend. Yeah, this is basically mini Fortnite. Okay, speaking of getting started, the video are going to be released every other day. And last time I checked, I think we have nine of those. Let me look real quick. Yeah, we have nine videos. It used to be 14 because that's the second time around I record this thing and the third time I make the project. Uh, my hard drive actually crashed. That was quite, 
quite something. Um, so I re-recorded the whole thing and I made sure to make it more compact and make it a lot better. So um, it used to be 49 hours. <laughs> now, as I am recording this, I haven't finished editing. Actually, I haven't even started editing those videos individually yet. So I don't know how long it is going to be. However, don't expect it to be longer than 10 hours. So a uh, lot of information to be picked up. Please make it to at least halfway because you're going to pick up most of the theory there and the rest would be mostly practice um, if you discard Mongo. But yeah, make it to at least halfway. If you don't think you're going to have the time to finish the whole thing, just make it halfway or make it to at least episode 4 um, after we go through the authentication flow because you'll pick up a lot from that. And yes, I have something else to add actually. The way we're going to be coding in this is my, I would say like my 10th iteration of the multiplayer server. I am somewhere around the 15 iteration right now, so I've improved a lot on that. And those improvements will be shown in the second tutorial, not in the first one, because I think the place where I, I stopped and I said, okay, so this is the one I'll be using and I'll be teaching, um, is understandable. And I think it's a good step from what we've done in the multiplayer pass that we had on this channel. Um, this one's going to help you understand a lot better. And then once we move on to the second tutorial, now we're going to optimize on that. In the second tutorial, we have to write our own packet byte by byte and read them in the right order. Um, for this one, we don't have to do that. We use a binary formatter instead, but it's a little bit less efficient, um, a lot easier to understand. So I think it's a very good step to start here, guys. So I will leave you on that final note. Thank you so much for sticking around for that long. I know I've been away for quite a while, but this is information that I digged a lot to get. The information on multiplayer for Unity is quite scarce, and uh, especially for Unity lower level API. Um, I really hope that you do enjoy this series, I really hope that you enjoy and follow along. And if you don't, please just show your support anyway, um, that'd be great. I need more likes, watch time and subscribers. That's all actually, that, that was very very honest, so yeah, okay. Alright guys, I will be catching you in the next one. Cheers.